Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I want us to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23. Beginning at verse 23. I could have heard some more of that. <laughs> Hallelujah, but I, I understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen, amen. God, we praise you. God, we glorify you. We magnify you. We lift you up. Thank you, God, once more again for allowing us to gather in this place in your presence to declare your truth. God, we pray in Jesus' name that you would forgive us. Forgive us, O oh God, again of all our sins. Let nothing, God, hinder us today from spending time with you and hearing a word from you. Fill the preacher, O oh God, today as well as the hearers with your word and your spirit. And let your word go forward on this Sunday morning with clarity, with simplicity, and yet with power. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. We do thank you. And the church say, Amen and Amen. Do this, do this, he said, in remembrance, in remembrance of me. I want us to live from this text for a thought. Remember me, remember me. Jesus said on this particular night, he said, remember me. That's what he said to his disciples before going to Calvary's cross. He said, remember me. You know, God knows that man, that you and I, we have the propensity to forget, to forget about God. God knows that, that, that man over time, over time, man will forget about God. It was something that Moses had to share with the children of Israel prior to them going into that promised land. He had to tell them to be careful that you don't forget the commandments that I'm sharing with you today. Amen. See, remembering God enriches our lives. That's what that text over there in Deuteronomy chapter 8, he was telling them to be careful not to forget the commands I'm giving you, he says on today. He says, so that you may, he said, live and increase. That, that, that Moses was saying to those folk back then, if you remember God, uh, he says, if you remember God in the land, in the promised land, he said that you would live, you know, that you would, you would thrive uh, 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 in the promised land. Uh, you, you would really, really blow up in the promised land if you remember God. You live there, and he said, and you would increase. You're going to increase, and he said, and you would take possession of that land. Could you just think about that for a moment this morning? Uh, 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 
just that Deuteronomy text, that Old Testament text, that eight chapter there, uh, 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 what Moses was saying uh, uh, to God folk back then was that if you just remember the commands uh, of the Lord, the stuff God is commanding you to do today, he says that you would not only go in the promised land, but you're going to live in there. You're going you're gonna to thrive. And I know people want to live today. They want to, some of us trying to figure out how some of us are thriving in a pandemic. Maybe it's because we haven't forgotten <laughs> who God is in this pandemic. And so we are living, we are increasing in it because we still have the presence of mind of who we are and who he is and what God means to our lives. We would, we, would, we would thrive, we would increase in the land, he said, and we'll be, we be able to take possession of the land. You'll be able to own it if you just can remember God. It's very important because in the same chapter, Moses had to say to them that, that, that what you have to arm yourselves and what you have to understand, he says, that, that after you get over there, he says, and after you're eating better than you have ever eaten before, <laughs> you know, uh, he said, he said, when you're eating better than you have ever eaten before, uh, uh, he said, when you're living in houses and, and I mean, nice stuff, you know, he said, when you're living really good, he said, he said that, that be careful that you don't forget God. And, and, and I think that's where I believe we find ourselves on this Sunday morning uh, uh, as people of faith is that, is that God's been so good to us. Uh, uh, God has blessed us that we are living in increase and, and we, have, we got a lot of stuff that we have taken possession of, right? And because we are so blessed and because God's been so good and so real to us, we have forgotten God. That, that, that we can forget God, uh, he can bless us so good, and we can get caught up into his blessings that we forget God. Uh, uh, I know that to be true because when, when Jeremiah writes in Jeremiah chapter 2, uh, 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 he picks up on something Moses said in Deuteronomy. In, in Jeremiah chapter 2, I think it's around verse 6, is when he says, he says that he, he writes to the Israelites and he says, look, you guys, you don't even inquire of the Lord. <laughs> he said, he said, look, look, they had left God and was following after some idol, some God that didn't bring them out of Egypt. And, and when Jeremiah writes to get their attention, uh, he says that you don't even inquire anymore of the Lord. You don't even ask where the Lord is. The God that, that brought you, he says, out of Egypt. The God that, that brought you into a promised land. The Lord, you know, that that's been so good to you, that, that have blessed you so good, that kept you, he says, through a barren land. It was God that, that brought you through a wilderness, he said, and you have forgotten that God. God knows that man has the, has the what, propensity that we can... We can forget about God. Uh, uh, we can get caught up in our days. Uh, uh, we can get caught up in our lives and, and caught up in whatever storm we're in or wh whatever mountaintop we're on. We can get caught in those experiences and, and forget that, that God is the one who can bring us out of valleys and we forget that God is the one that place you on the pedestal, that God is the one that has blessed you in such a fine way. And so here it is in this text in front of us this morning in a New Testament writing is when Paul hears about what's happening in this church in Corinth. Uh, uh, Paul, uh, uh, from what he heard about what was going on as it relates to around the Lord's Supper, it were indicators that they had forgot who Jesus was. Uh, 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 you see, what was happening uh, around the supper that, that caused Paul to have to drop this teachings, this remembrance on the church was that they had what they call a love fest. Uh, they would have what we might call a potluck. 
uh, 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 before the Lord's Supper, they had a fellowship. That's what Baptists call it, fellowships. When, when we bring our dishes, you know, uh, 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 pound cakes and, 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 and uh, you know, peach cobblers, you know what y'all like, and, and, and you know, r real greens, not glory greens, but, but real greens. And, you know, I'm talking about real eating. And, and so in this potluck that they were having, uh, what turned out to happen was that those that God had blessed, the ones who had more than those who had less than them who were part of that church, they would get together and they would eat up all of the food and drink up all that was there to be, to have, to be consumed, all the beverages, you know, they would drink it all up, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, and so when the poor folk showed up, when the poor members arrived, uh, they, 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 they what? All the food was gone and, and, and all the drink was gone. And so what had happened just because of that particular behavior, because of the way they were carrying on, see, it's were indicators that they had forgot who Jesus was. You know, you know, the way we behave, the way we live our day to day, right? It, it tells us whether or not we remember who Christ is. And so Paul drops this on them in this text and on this weekend when we are remembering. We're remembering, we're looking back on this weekend some 244 years when we, when we got our independence, 1776. We still celebrate that every year, and we should celebrate uh, such victory, right? Such accomplishment to have our freedom as a nation from England. But we also, as people of faith, amen, just as important it is that we make a big deal out of our independence, right? We ought to make sure we never forget who God is and what God means to us, right? We should never forget that. And so Paul, in this letter, uh, uh, he says a few things to us that I want to share this morning that help us, I hope, uh, uh, and see the importance, what, of remembering Jesus, of remembering Jesus. First thing you see in this text, Paul, uh, uh, he says he received something from the Lord. This teaching about the Lord's Supper, he said, I got it from the Lord. You know, you know, it's so important that we get our teachings from the Lord. I know I'm up here preaching today, but, but I hope I'm preaching what the Lord is saying today, right? That we get our teaching, we get our word from the Lord. He said, that's something I received from the Lord. He said, I passed it on. In other words, I passed it, he said, on to you. In other words, here are some people that had already been trained, had already been taught the right way to do things, and what happens? We forget about the right way to do things. And that's why it's so important that, 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 that we remind each other uh, of the right way to do things because we're getting our own habits and, and get comfortable doing what's comfortable for us and overlook there is a better way to do what you're doing. And so Paul says, I've passed on this teaching to you, but, but look like y'all didn't forget. And he, here's he said, look, we want to remember. When you say I'm remembering the Lord on a day like today, you have to remember, Paul says, that when he instituted the Lord's Supper, it happened on the night or an evening that Jesus was betrayed. Huh, huh? Hey, look. It, it, when, when he institute the Lord's Supper, uh, uh, it's the night, it's the evening that Christ is betrayed. Now, I don't know about you, but, 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 but there's some Christians who can't, who can't pull off what Jesus pulled off uh, and deal with betrayal. Uh, uh, not, not only this night he's betrayed on this night, but he also know <clears throat> that one of the people around the table who's going to break bread with him and who is going to drink wine with him, one of them that's dear to him is going to also deny him. Now, I don't know about you. I, I've been saved, and I know I, I'm not yet. I don't have my, my, my wings. They're not dipped in gold. I don't know if I can, if I could, if I can do Jesus that night because, because if I got firsthand knowledge that, that somebody going to betray me, and somebody gonna deny me, 
I don't know if I could drink wine with you. I don't know if I can eat a hamburger or split, you know, a bun with you. I'm just being honest with you. It teaches me that when I remember Jesus, I remember somebody who had a very strong love for humanity. And, and, and when you and I take the Lord's Supper, it ought to remind us of that type of strong love. It ought to challenge us as people of faith to understand that God wants you and I to love that way. I mean, just think where we would be as a world if we just knew how to love that strong, that you can still love somebody that's going to betray you, that, that he still loved Judas the way he loved the other disciples. I mean, look, he washed his feet. He washed the man's feet that was going to betray him. He didn't break bread with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He did, he, you know, you know sometimes, you know, I guess you shouldn't eat with the devil. You shouldn't make a habit of eating with the devil, huh? Shouldn't make a habit of eating with the devil. I'm trying to help some of y'all who, who just eat with anybody. Jesus, he washed his feet, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't share the Lord's Supper with him. And that might be because in John's Gospel, he said that he knew that Judas was the devil from day one. He said, he said everybody you have given me, he said, I kept. I haven't lost nobody except that one who was never one of us. And so even in that teaching is that when we partake of the Lord's Supper, all of us ought to be saved. All of us ought to be under Jesus' covering. Uh, he said, this text, he did it the night that he was betrayed. So I see the faithfulness as well as the, 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 the strong love of Jesus in this supper is teaching you and I that we got to be faithful to God even in this season we're in, when it's so easy for us uh, to miss out. You got to challenge yourself to be faithful to God in this season, right? You have to challenge yourself. You see the faithfulness of Christ that he refuses to allow people he loves who is betraying him on this night, who will deny him days later, Jesus Christ is still a picture of faithfulness. He still honors God the Father and the plan that God has for his life, what God mapped out for Jesus to do. We see Jesus not allowing anything outside of him to stop him from, from fulfilling the mission that God had given him to do, and that is to go to Calvary's cross and die. Sometimes we'll miss out on our Calvary experience by fighting with Peter and Judas on the way. Uh, uh, the text says that, that it was that night. And here's another interesting thing. It says, he says to them, he says, when we come, he said, give thanks, he said, and break it. Then he talks about, he says, his body. It's his body. Take this bread. His, it's his body. The bread represents the body of Jesus, right? The body. When you take that Lord's Supper, uh, in our faith, we believe those elements on the table that they symbolizes the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. But he says when you take, he says, when you take this bread that now Jesus calls it his body. His body. Look, look at what you, re what you remember, preach. I remember that Jesus Christ is offering himself up as a sacrifice. Huh? When, we, when we partake of the Lord's Supper, it's a good time to examine ourselves to see have I offered myself up to God as a sacrifice. He's offering his, it's, the easiest thing to do is write a check to the church. I want y'all to keep writing them, keep writing your checks. But, but that's the easiest thing to do, is give the church an offering. The hardest thing for you to do in the kingdom is to offer your body. It's to offer your body. Because if God, look, if he gets your body, he gets the checkbook. <laughs> he said, look, look, even Paul writes about it over there in Romans. He says that we ought to present ourselves 
to God. He says, as a living sacrifice. Ha, ha. Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice, grant, granted. Uh, but he offers himself, you know, uh, the teachings around the Lord's Supper is that, is that the unleavened bread that they were eating, Jesus said, it's my body that would be broken, that would, that would suffer, that would die on a cross just hours from this dinner. The next day, he would die. And, and, and he tells them, whenever you come together, I want you to remember, ministry is about sacrifice. Ministry is about sacrifice. It's about sacrifice, church. That's what ministry is all about. It's not about convenience. It's not about you liking how it's going. Ministry is about you offering up your body to God. On, you see, sacrifices are placed on the altar. And, and the idea of a sacrifice is that it has to die. The lamb is, look, they, they, they slaughter the lamb. The, uh, you know, you know. So, so when, we, when we say that, that we, we're offering our bodies up as a sacrifice, we're saying that our old person has been put to death. My old thoughts, my old ways, what I would say, what I won't do. See, that's dead. So often in church that, that, that you, look, the dead man still walking. Because in ministry oftentimes, we still dealing with the old you. Huh? You, you got a badge on that say you're a Christian. You, you, look, you got a lot of church paraphernalia that look like you're a Christian, but, but, but the most important piece haven't happened yet, and that is what? You have to die. Romans 6 talks about dying to yourself. You know, you die, and then you present your members as instruments for the kingdom of God. God can't use us until we dead. You got to be dead. Jesus, he said, this, 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 this bread, this unleavened bread, he said, it's my body. We see that Christ, he sacrificed himself. He's a sacrificial lamb. He, he sacrificed himself. He, 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 he fulfills what scripture said about him over there in Philippians chapter 2 when it said that he would leave heaven and take on, take on this body of a human and that he would become a servant and that Christ would suffer and that he would die. But then Paul writes over there that, 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 that every tongue <laughs> will confess that he's lost. So in other words, sometimes, look, God wants us to die to ourselves in order for God to what? To elevate us, for God to lift us up, for God to what? Multiply, you know, his blessings in our lives. We have to first be willing to sacrifice our ways, what we are comfortable with. We have to let the Lord have it. So he, 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 he offers up himself as a living sacrifice. How are we doing with that? How are we doing with, with, with offering ourselves up as a sacrifice? That's what's needed. That's, that's the key to saving. To saving is, is serving. We have to, Jesus came to serve the world in order to save the world. And so, and so we need a church uh, uh, in this 21st century. We need more believers who will sacrifice themselves and not look for the easy way out, but sacrifice themselves that the church might save families, might save a community, might, might save a city. The way that we save a city is first that in the church we have to lay ourselves on the altar. We have to die to ourselves. Thirdly, he says, he says, remember, he says, this new covenant. Paul mentions a new covenant. He says, in the same way after supper, he took a cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. He says, do this, and whenever you drink it, it's in remembrance of me. So when I remember Christ, uh, I remember that I'm operating now under a new covenant. I'm not operating 
under the covenant that God made with Abraham. Uh, I'm in a covenant relationship with God. In Abraham's covenant back there in Genesis 15, uh, the covenant that God made, that old covenant, it was between God and Abraham, but it was really about the children of Israel. It was, a, it was a covenant that God made with a nation, with Hebrew people, that he would be their God and, and they would be his people. And God was true to that covenant. God was not the one that broke the covenant. Man broke the covenant. But here it is in this New Testament where when he mentions this new covenant, uh, uh, he, he, he's mindful, I believe, of Jeremiah 31. Over there in Jeremiah 31, verse 31, I believe this through 34, is when Jeremiah talks about a new covenant. And over there in Jeremiah, he says some things that make sense to us today. Because he says, God says, I'm going to put my word on your inward part. That was something new. He, 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 didn't, he didn't say that in the old covenant. He said in the new covenant, he said, I'm going to put my word, he says, in your inward parts. And he said, and I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people. He said, I will forgive your wickedness. And he talks about not remembering their sins anymore. Uh, uh, that's what Jeremiah said. And Jeremiah 31. And here is Paul writing in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, reminding them that the blood that Jesus shares, uh, shed on Calvary is, is God's signature. He signs the covenant with the blood of Jesus. In this new covenant, uh, there's a promise that God would fill us with himself. Uh, they didn't have that in the, old, in the old covenant. They had God operating outside of them, and God would show up every now and then when they needed him. But in the new covenant that, that Jesus is talking about, God will fill every one of us with himself, with the per third person in the Godhead, which is the Holy Spirit that Jesus taught about in John 14 and 16, that when I leave, he says, I'm going to send you a comforter. Now, look at here. That's some good stuff. That, 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 that in the new covenant, uh, I have God, what, <clears throat> indwelling. I got him with me 24-7. And then he promised me, he promised me eternal life. Uh, uh, not just life when I get to heaven, but he promised me that I would have an abundant life on my way to heaven. And, and he promised me not just, not just life, but life eternal. Now, here's what's a shout about this new covenant. Now, in a covenant relationship, we know that, that, that it, when, you know, it's between God and man. And, and, and the faithful one in the relationship, you know, is God. That, that, that man will get tired of himself and leave. Uh, I've heard folk that say, look, it ain't nothing wrong with you. It's me. I'm leaving because of me. I ain't never heard of nothing like that. It ain't nothing wrong with me, yet you're going to leave me? You know, but, but, but I'm so glad God is not like us. In this contract, in this new covenant, he promised to never leave us nor forsake us, and he promised us eternal life. But what shouts me about the new covenant is that everybody, not just his people can have yeah, a relationship with God, but in the new covenant, it declares that anybody and everybody can have a relationship with God. So you see, the woman at the well had a relationship with him. The man with leprosy had a relationship with him. The woman caught in adultery had a relationship with him. I mean, in this new covenant relationship that we have with God, thanks to Jesus and Calvary's cross, that all of us have access to God. All of us can have a new beginning. And so whenever I eat that bread and drink that wine, I'm reminded of what I have in Jesus. Huh? When you remember Jesus, your problems go away. Huh, huh, huh. Watch this here. Huh, huh. He, he, I had to throw uh, this, this, this verse this, this verse in here, I just had to put this verse uh, in here, this verse 33. I just had to throw it in there because, because in verse 33, uh, he, say, he says, now look, he says, so then 
my brothers and sisters, he says, when you come together to eat, I like that. When you come together to eat. See, when I remember Jesus, you got to remember togetherness. He, he didn't eat the meal by himself. They, they, they ate the meal together. Uh, and this is why uh, 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 in this new age we're in, in this 21st century church era we're in, to me there's some bad theology around the Lord's Supper. Uh, uh, that that, that reason why I didn't just let y'all stop by on a Saturday and just pick up the cup and, and take it home. Uh, uh, my conviction wouldn't let me do that. Uh, even though we can take it together virtually, I got that. I ain't mad at you if it works for you. But, but my conviction wouldn't let me do that. Uh, 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 because, because when they took it, they were together. They, they, they came to a certain place to take it together. And, 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 and Jesus together is the key. It reminds us <clears throat> the way to have victories in life, we got to have togetherness. The way to build a strong church and strong ministry, you got to have togetherness. The way to have a strong marriage that lasts through adversity and, and challenges and, and things that beat on it and come against that relationship is that you got to have togetherness. Look at here, the way, to, the way to go to reach high heights in life is togetherness. It's working together. The Bible declares a house that's divided, it cannot stand. And so when I remember Jesus and I remember the Lord's Supper and his meaning, I remember that the saints were together. It was not something that, that, that me and my wife just do at the house to make our, our love stronger for each other and stronger for God. I don't know why they think that taking the Lord's Supper at the house as a couple. I don't know why we think that taking the Lord's Supper is going to heal your body from some sickness. That's not in this verse. What's in this passage is if you take it wrong, you're going to get sick. <laughs> you're going to need a healing if you take it wrong. He said, because you're taking it wrong, some of y'all weak, some of y'all sick, and some of y'all have fallen asleep. That, that, that's for taking it the wrong way. But the right way to take it is to be able to come together. See, when you come together, you got to put your differences aside. You know, you know, you, you got to check your egos, you know. You know, you got, it, it takes humility for folk to come together. Huh? You can't, everybody can't be a chief. And then we have togetherness. We all gotta, we all gotta put things aside. We gotta have some humility. We gotta be able to put our differences aside and gather. They were all, he said, when you come together to do it, he said, do it in remembrance of Jesus. And remembrance. Now, he didn't say when you do it, you're gonna be healed. But I guess if I remember Jesus, and if there's sickness in my body. He can heal me. <laughs> Look, I guess if I remember Jesus uh, and I don't have no money in my bank account, I can get some money. I guess if there's trouble in my life and I remember Jesus. He said, oh, don't, don't, don't remember the stuff he can do for you. He said, remember him. First Sunday is when we come together just to remember him. Not to beg for nothing. Not, not, to, not to trick him into, into, into giving us a miracle. No. When you take the supper, you remember how Jesus Christ put it all on the line for you. Paul said, when I remember Jesus, I remember when I was without sin, when I was without strength, he says. When I was without strength, he says, he died for me. When I was weak, he died for me. See, when you remember Jesus, you remember what you are not. And you got to praise him. You got to shout when you think about how he loved you in spite of you. So when I remember Jesus, I remember the one who, who died for me. Huh? The, one, the one who set me free. 
time. When I remember Jesus, I remember the one who gave me another chance. When, when I remember Jesus, I remember the God that when everybody else said it couldn't happen, he told me it can. Yeah, you see, when I remember Jesus, look, I have fond memories of a God that loved me beyond my understanding. I can't comprehend how he loved me and why he loved me. I can't comprehend why he haven't given up on me. Knowing what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to do next month, yet on today he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. And just like he went to Calvary, what, to set us free, he's our answer in this season. We got to turn to Jesus. We got to turn to God in the pandemic. That's where we got to go. We got to turn to God. We got to trust God. We got we to gotta lay that on the altar. We got to be able to tell God, God, this thing that's happening to us is beyond our capacity. We need you, God. You the one that can do it. You the one that can take a piece of wood, a branch off a tree and, and throw in some bit of water and make it sweet. <laughs> if you can make a uh, 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 an axe head, an iron axe head swim. <laughs> you, you the one. Huh? If, you, if you can walk on water in a storm, you the one. That, that's what we got to remember. We got to remember God's love. Jesus' portfolio. <laughs> when we remember him, we can't but praise him. We can't but walk in this place and lifting up holy hands and giving God praise huh? and acknowledging God for who he is. He is the God that is worthy of all our praise. I'm out of y'all way today. I just wanted to share with you today how important it is that we remember God in this season. And if you remember God, you'll work for togetherness. Yes, you will. You work for together. If you remember God, you remember that you got to what? You got to sacrifice yourself. If you remember God, you remember that there's a covenant relationship we have with him. That he loved you that much, that he was willing to die. That he signed the license and with the blood of Jesus. And that you got to have a strong love and a, a faithfulness for God. Even on a night you betrayed. Even, even on a day like today where you might feel that God, that God is not blessing you the way you think he ought to be blessing you today. You got to still be faithful. Huh? You got to still be able to tell God, in spite of all of that, I'm still going to bless your name. You got to have some of that Job theology. Naked I came into the world, naked I will leave. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all of what he went through and all of what happened to him, he, he would never would curse God. That's when you remember who God is. When you remember who God is, you could yield and you can obey and you could follow God. God, we thank you today. God, we, we praise you today. We, we magnify you today. We lift you up. God, if we ever needed to remember you, we need to remember you today. Chaos and protest and marching on our streets, sickness everywhere, death everywhere. We need to remember you today. God, help us to, to focus our attention, to turn our focus upward and to seek your face. Lift our eyes to the hills from which cometh our help. We can't lift our head up until we can remember how much you love us, how much you care. Let's remember that you're an awesome God, that all power, heaven and earth, is in your hands. Thank you, God, again, for your word and your sweet spirit. 
we be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. For it's in Jesus' precious name we pray and we do thank you. And the church say, amen, amen. If you don't know the Lord today as your personal Savior, amen. If I were you, I'd turn to him. If you don't know him, all you got to do is have faith in Jesus. You can confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that he is Lord, that he is Savior. Call us up. Reach out to us. We'll certainly get back with you if you're here in our city. In need of a church home, give us a chance. We'd love to have you come and be a part of our church family. If you're not, amen, here in San Antonio and you're listening to us on today, amen. I, there's a church. There's a church where you are. There's a good church where Christ is king, where he's the center of attention in that church. You get with that pastor. They'll tell you what to do. Amen. They'll tell you the next steps to do if you accept Christ today as your Lord and Savior. You want to be saved today. You are saved, but follow it up with baptism and find a church close to where you are, and you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us on the day. Amen. Our prayer is that God continue to keep his hand. Amen. God continue to watch over you and keep you is our prayer. God bless you. Amen. Go with God. Be encouraged. Hallelujah. 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 Hello, I'm Pastor Price of St. John Baptist Church. I want to just thank you for watching us today. I want to encourage you to be one of our subscribers. If you're not already one of our subscribers, please subscribe uh, to our Facebook page. Also, if you need more information about our church, uh, there's a link below that you can click on and learn more about St. John Baptist Church. Also, if you want to give and support the work of the Lord that we have us doing here in San Antonio, you can go to our website. Uh, we have PayPal there. We can, you can give and support the work of the Lord here in San Antonio. So glad, again, that you took the time out to, to watch us, and we hope you come back, visit with us again. Be blessed.